just not going to work. And besides, you know, when we, we think about sharing your faith, it, it makes us uncomfortable. It, we wonder how it's going to go. We don't feel totally equipped or what if I say something wrong or what if somebody gets angry at me or, or whatever. And so I understand there's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of feelings of we, we just, you know, keep your faith to yourself. Things work out better that way. What is it that blocks the door to sharing your faith? What is it that kind of holds you back from sharing the love of Jesus Christ? Sharing the good news of what he has done. Before Jesus left this world, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Go. And, and that word go, as, as it is there, it's just like as you go about your life, as you go about your daily activities, as you go about doing the things that you're doing, have this mindset about you. Make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We call this the Great Commission. We've been given a job. We've been empowered. The pro Lord promises to be with us. Sometimes it just feels like a closed door. It feels like, ugh. I, I want to. I, I know there's people who need it, but uh, I just don't know. You see, sharing your faith flows out of a life that has been touched by Jesus. We've taken time through the beginning of this, of this new year to, to look at this new life in Jesus Christ. We started out January 1, talking about a brand new you. You're a new creation. You've been made new. This is the best news in the world. This is who you are in Jesus Christ. And then we saw, well, how do I know I'm a Christian? And we looked at, well, you know, does it mean to go to church or, you know, all kinds of things that you do. Does that make what you a Christian? We discovered it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It's a gift from God. It's not from ourselves. It's not by the works that we do. There's, there's no reason for us to boast. It's all a gift from God. And we looked at how do we grow. How do we grow deep and, and strong and, and growing in our understanding of God's word and, and prayer and, and living it out. And then last week was our, our kindness challenge. That's it. Show your faith. Demonstrate to the world the kindness and the love and the care of Jesus Christ. And we saw how that was an entry point for what we're going to talk about today. How do I share my faith? How do I share my faith? I, I chose a picture of two cups of coffee. Because sometimes sharing your faith is best done in that kind of a one-on-one -on -one relationship where there's already a friendship and and. And you're talking together, and, and you just, the time is right to say, can I share something with you that is extremely important to me and I think that would be really beneficial in your life? The Apostle Paul, once his life was, was changed, once Jesus touched and transformed his life, he, he, you can shut the guy up. He was running around the whole world just, just sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. But his instructions to the believers in the ch at the church in Colossae is this. He says, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And then he says, and pray for us too, that, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. And then he says, but you too, be wise in the way that you act towards people who are outside the faith. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, just a little a flavor and preservative and, and enough there to, to keep people intrigued so that you may know how to answer everyone. 
So put together this, this what I want to call a metaphor, using a door illustration here to, to help us understand some of the dynamics of, of what we need to do as we share our faith. I'm not, by having this door, advocating that we need to go out and, and you know, knock on 20 million doors in the neighborhood and wake people up or, you know, all that sort of thing. Sometimes that works. Quite honestly, in today's age, it's mostly annoying. And so we're going to try walk through that, okay? But let's envision then this door as a metaphor for how do I, as someone who, who's been touched by the love and grace of Jesus Christ, get connected to a person on the other side? A person who doesn't know Jesus, who hasn't you know, sh- uh, given their life to him, who, who doesn't understand what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. It, sometimes it seems like the door is locked. What unlocks the door? The key, Paul says, is prayer. Devote yourselves to prayer. Remember, th- this is a an interpersonal thing, but behind it, it's a spiritual thing. Someone's heart will not be turned unless the Holy Spirit is at work there. And prayer is the key that opens up the doors of opportunities and receptivity. So, so we need to pray. Devote yourselves to prayer. Think of people in your life that as far as you know, don't know Jesus. They don't know his love, his salvation, his grace and mercy. Begin by praying for them. Lord, I pray for my friend. Or I pray for, for the guy on the assembly line down from me. Or I pray for my fellow student or whomever that may be, a family member. Begin praying. Pray with regularity. Pray for opportunities. Pray that God would open up hearts. The first key in unlocking the door. And second, Paul says, be careful in your conduct. Be watchful, he says. Watchful is, is, is mindful that, that all of our lives, what we do, what we say, how we act, what we post on Facebook or whatever that may be, reflects not just us, but reflects Jesus Christ. So be careful in your conduct before you spout off about this, that, or the other thing. Think about how does this come across to people? Is it just, you know, angry? Is it just blowing off some steam or whatever? But people are reading what you post. People are watching how you act. People are are looking at you, how you handle situations. And and they're going to say, is this a person... I could connect with? Is this a person I could relate to? So be careful in your conduct. Be watchful, but then also thankful. Uh, an attitude of grace, an attitude where where it's it's not about, it's sometimes, un- unfortunately, people who, who've accepted Jesus Christ and are, are really working hard at trying to live their lives for him can kind of come across as a little... You know, better than thou, and a little bit like you should and you sh- you shouldn't. I know I'm probably way off base here, but you you kind of know what I'm talking about, right? It happens. But you see, it, it's not about how good I am. It never was, because I would be so lost without that. Being watchful and thankful means my whole attitude about living the Christian life is is not you know I'm better than you. No, it's like we all need help. We all need hope. We all need a Savior. So be thankful in your attitude. This is, this is the key, then, that, that helps unlock the door. Some possibilities. But now, how do we open the door? How do we begin to, to engage with, with the person on the other side? You know, sometimes we want to, you know, just you know, yank that door open and get going. We're so excited and so forth. The Apostle Paul, I think, kind of had that personality, too. Boy, he was just going to share with you, but as he reflects with the Colossians, he says, no, be wise in the way that you act towards those outside the faith. So, so don't be yanking on the door and, and being annoying. No, 
allow them to open the door to you. Allow them to open the door to you. What, what does that mean? What does that look like? It, it starts out by, by being ready for opportunities that come along the way. You know, you're working side by side over something, and somebody starts describing a situation at home and how things are just kind of falling apart. It's just like, oh, my life is, is, is such a mess right now. There's an opportunity to show kindness, to show care, to show concern. It's just like, oh, man, I'm sorry for you. That's got to hurt. That's got to be painful. Would it be okay if I, I prayed for you? Was, was that? It's like, yeah, yeah, prayer can't hurt. Man, go for it. You look for these opportunities wherever they, they where you see human need. Maybe somebody's struggling financially and, you know, the kindness card thing kind of encouraged you. Boy, I could give a gift. I could help out. And whether you choose to do it anonymously or, or, or maybe just quietly so it's, it's not a big public deal or whatever, but there's a way of saying, hey, you know, can I bring you something? Can I, can I help out in some way? Be ready for opportunities. And being prayerful ahead of time will alert you to these opportunities that come along. Be willing to get involved. Okay? Our lives are busy. I know that. But we do the things that are important to us, don't we? We make time for the things that we care about. Do we care about the person on the other side of the door? Do we really care about their life, about their relationship to Jesus Christ, whether they know a father who, who loves them and, and, and can, can follow a pattern of life that would just really help them? And to have an assurance of an eternity that can give them peace that is just, just beyond this world. But you've got to be willing to get involved. See, because cause entering into somebody else's chaos can get messy. There's not always easy answers. Sometimes you're being asked to do things that, well, that's going to take some time. That's going to take, yeah, it is. But is it worth it? Jesus thought it was worth it. It got really messy for him to come down to this world to help us out. We were just talking about that a little bit ago. But he was willing to do it. And he would like his followers to be willing to get involved as well. And then be pleasantly persistent. Let's be honest. When you start, you know, talking a little bit about faith, there, there's this natural reaction that people have. It's like, okay, who are you? What are you trying to do? Sort of thing. I'm sorry, but that, that happens in our world. There, there are people, some more than others, that, that are resistive. Sometimes they're resistive because they're not quite sure who you are. We haven't really developed the friendship yet. Sometimes they're resistive because maybe they grew up and, and were in a church situation that was less than pleasant or, or went through a bad experience, and, and you can be met with some anger and hostility. I know I have. But you can't be personally offended by that or turned off. They're not mad at you. They're not angry at you. You're, you're trying to be helpful. And so what I found is try to be caring. Hey, hey, I see this, you know, this is hard for you. Love to hear your story sometime if you'd be willing to share it with me. I'll buy the cup of coffee. I've done that on several occasions. And it's not like, oh, hey, fine, no problem, let's go out. But in just little gentle ways, saying even though you kind of rejected what I was trying to present to you, I'm not rejecting you. I still care about you. I'm still interested in your world, and the kindness that you show makes an impact. The, the, the excuses that people have, all Christians are hypocrites, all Christians are self-righteous, all Christians just care about themselves. 
all of a sudden here's somebody who's showing just the opposite. And so pleasantly persistent. Sometimes people aren't interested. I get that too. They, they just don't see the need. They just don't see the point. They just don't see the use. And then it's just kind of a gentle presence, just letting Jesus Christ reveal himself through you and how you handle life, how you deal with things and so forth. That maybe there is something to this after all. But it takes persistence and continuing to be pleasant about it. Other people are genuinely hungry, are genuinely interested, and, and once you get past a couple of barriers, they really are open to an invitation to come to an event at church, to, to send their kids to Bible school, to, to be involved in a youth program. I mean, Brandon, Nikki, that's, that's how you guys kind of walked your way in, right? You know, Kingston started out as Bible school. We had a baseball game in South Bend your family participated in. Tom and Kelly were neighbors next door and, you know, game nights and so forth. But, but finally, you were just sensing that need in your life and started showing up on a Sunday. You see, invitations are so important. Invitations say, I think you'd be interested in this. I think this could be beneficial to you. And it may not always happen the first time, but people genuinely appreciate invitations. Now, if somebody has zero experience with churches and so forth, maybe all they know is what they've seen on TV. That's kind of a scary thought, isn't it? Okay? So coming in those doors are actually frightening. They really are, because you don't know what's happening inside. You don't know the culture. You don't know the language. You don't know what's expected of you. Stand down, sit up, sing, clap. What? what? You don't know a thing. But if somebody who knows the routine says, hey, come with me. In fact, I'll pick you up. It makes it a lot easier to walk through the door. So invite, invite, invite. Be wise in the way that you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be, be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Okay? And in that process, they begin to open the door. You're not yanking on it yourself. They are opening the door to you. But now, it's stepping in. It's stepping in on this side. And there's something significant about that. You're entering into their world. You're trying to understand them. You're trying to understand their needs, their hurts, their hopes, their fears. How does Jesus Christ and his love fit what's present in their life. The first, thing, the first thing is be a genuine friend. If it comes across in some way, it's like, well, you know, our pastor said on Sunday that we should, like, share our faith, so I thought I better come over and talk to you. You're probably not interested, but I just feel like this is kind of my duty. I need to talk to you. Do you want to come on Sunday or not? <laughs> it's probably not the most strategic way to, to, to start here, Okay. But, but, but seriously, be a genuine friend, even if they turn you down. They may. But if it's like, okay, yeah, give up on you, on to the next. You're just my project anyway. Now, we weren't Jesus' project when he came to this world. He loved us. He loved us right down to the very core. So be a genuine friend as well. Continue to pray for them. Things will come up. Opportunities will come up. Help them with questions. That's different than saying you have to answer all of their questions. Sometimes in the beginning, those questions are like super big and super theological and super like, you know, 
you know, well, how do you explain in the Bible this, 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 and this? And you're just like, oh, my goodness. Sometimes it's just, man, you've got some great questions, some questions that sometimes I think about. Some, some of your questions I've never even thought about before. You know, I don't have the answer to all of them. Maybe I could find some helpful resources, but I love how you're thinking about that. And I'd love to listen to why that's important to you. So help them with the questions of faith. Or even, you know, just, just say, you know, sometimes I wrestle with that myself. But it doesn't mean that I don't believe, even though all of my questions aren't answered. I've come to know Jesus in a way that I trust him even beyond the doubts or the questions or the things that I also experience in my life. You see, the best argument for faith is that loving heart, is that helpful hand. And sometimes questions are just a smoke screen to try to push you off and make you squirm. But if you see, if that person sees that you still care, you still love, those questions sometimes get answered on their own. And then did I say invite? Real, serious. I was reading a book this week. Some guy who's doing sociological research. And his area of study was people who don't go to church. And, and he asked people, would you go to church if somebody asked you? I was shocked by the numbers that came back by that. That it was like well over 50% of people would. Now, that means that there's probably another 50% who won't. So be prepared for that. But, but, but seriously, folks, we generally have room here on Sunday morning. All right? Invite somebody. Just say, hey, I don't know if you'd be interested, but we've got an interesting sermon coming up or whatever that may be. The, the music at our church, awesome, I love it. Whatever that may be, but... Find something that you think they're going to connect to and, and invite them. That's why we put together different programs, different activities. And, and, and seriously, if, if there's stuff that, that happens here that you would say, boy, it would be really helpful for my friend if we could do this or, or do something a little bit different, I think it would be more welcoming. We're all over that. We want to listen to that. But invite, invite. And then there'll come a point in time in which you'll sense here's a good chance to share who Jesus is and what he's all about. Uh, I wrestle with this sometimes. Sometimes I think I'm, I'm, I, I take way too long because I want to make sure that that relationship is good and solid before I, I bring it up. But I have had times in which I've said to people, would it be okay with you if I share just a little bit of the story of the Bible, what it's all about? Or would you be interested in, in finding out what really makes someone a Christian? Or can, can I share with you my own story of how God really did something amazing in my life? Would that be okay with you? You see, you're, you're asking permission. And, and how you phrase that, how you set that up can, can like, yeah, sure, I'd love to hear that. Be ready. Ready to share. You, you, you've stepped in the door. You're over there, but now they're kind of interested about what this is all about over here. Leading them through the door. What does that look like? Understand what the gospel is, folks. Salvation is a gracious gift from God that you receive by faith in Jesus. There's lots of other things that we do at church and, you know, want to encourage people to come and give and serve and, and, and all that other stuff, and it all it fits together, but this is the gospel. Salvation is a gracious gift from God that you receive by faith in Jesus. So we're over here shared a little bit about my story or whatever, explained a, a little bit, but I said, do you know, all of us 
have sinned. All of us have, have, have fallen short. All of us are in desperate need of a Savior. Me too. But then the good news is that Jesus died on a cross to pay for all of our sins. What we can't do on our own, Jesus has taken care of that for us. But we need to respond to that. And so when we receive forgiveness and eternal life, when we trust him, that's what having faith is, is that we believe that Jesus can handle our problem, that Jesus can run our life better than we can, that we're just saying to him, help me, I need this, I can't do it on my own. And those are just the simple things then that help somebody step through the door. Now, I think it's really good after you've kind of gone through these things, you say, do you, do you understand what I'm talking about here? You know, you have a chance to clarify. But then say, does this make sense to you? Is this something that you're interested in, in doing? And usually there's, there's some pause right there, and that's good. They're thinking about it. And sometimes people aren't ready right there on the spot. But again, that, that pleasantly persistent, I just say, you know, I'd like to talk to you about again sometime after you've had a little more chance to think about it. Okay, let's, let's do that. Let's set a date. All right, sounds good. But sometimes they say, yeah, I know I need it. Uh, I probably won't be any good at it, and it's, it's okay. I'm not, not so good myself. But let's just have a little prayer here together. And you just say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Help my friend here just to recognize his need, to love and trust you, and to begin that journey of faith. And that's stepping through the door. And they'll believe it. When they come to that point, friends, there's just not anything better than that. There's just not anything better than that. Because that person has just received eternal life. And God was using you and your friendship and your persistence and your prayers were integral to faith. You know, we, we, we started out by talking about that, that closed door, and sometimes we're hesitant here and there and, and so forth, and, and I understand that. But let's put it in this way. For physical life, sometimes we see an obvious need and we're not really quite sure, we're not all medically trained, but we can see this person needs help. And, and somebody came up with a very helpful machine that you just slap it on, you know, and it just kind of walks you through what to do. If somebody were lying there, obvious in need, would you just kind of go, well, eh, let someone else deal with them. He's got more knowledge. That was your friend. That was your family member, someone you cared about. You're grabbing this baby. You're opening it up. You're, you're pressing the on button. You're listening carefully, and you're doing what needs to be done, even if it isn't exactly pertinent. The machine will get you through it. There are people all around you who are having spiritual heart attacks in deep need who don't know Jesus Christ but he is the hope he is the salvation he is the one that we need to turn to you have some idea how it works I just want to encourage Share your faith. 
God will forgive you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, for whatever reason, sometimes we just, just get all worked up about the share in the faith thing. And really, the enemy likes to use that to, to keep us quiet, to not engage, don't get involved. And that is so wrong. Because people so need you. So help us, Lord, through prayer, unlock that door, through kindness, to open the door, through friendship, to step inside. And then with the truth of the gospel, lead people to step through. Thank you for being our great God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for winning the victory for us, for showing us what the Christian life is all about so that we can share that with others.